Hello, my name is Colin Doyle and I'm a Senior Systems Engineer at Juniper Networks. This is the third video in a series that demonstrates to the viewer how to install, configure, and operate the Juniper Cloud CSO SD-WAN spoke test environment on their own laptop or desktop computer. In my previous video, we set up our hypervisor interfaces and deployed our WAN emulation virtual machine. In this video, we will be doing initial setup on our virtual SRX secure SD-WAN gateway. We'll start by importing the VSRX OVA file and deploying it in Fusion. We'll then boot our VSRX guest and perform some initial configuration tasks to ensure we are ready for provisioning. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to explain one of the more complex components of this video. Our SD-WAN test environment requires the addition of an interface to the default configuration that every VSRX guest deploys with. By default, the VSRX will include three interfaces. The first interface is mapped to the out-of-band management port configured as FXP0 in Junos. The second and third interfaces map to GE000 and GE001, respectively. We'll be using these interfaces for our simulated WAN links, which means we'll need GE002 for our LAN guest. VSRX requires that all interfaces use the virtual adapter type VMXNet3. For most hypervisors, defining the virtual adapter type is done when creating a new interface. In Fusion, and maybe some other hypervisors I don't know about, this option to define the virtual adapter type isn't present. This means that if you add a new network adapter to your VSRX guest in Fusion and attempt to boot, you will receive an error message and this interface will not be connected. The solution is to create and boot your guest in a very specific manner and then edit the guest's .vmx configuration file, adding required lines of configuration for your new interface. If you're not proficient in a Linux CLI, this can seem a bit daunting, and yes, a bit ridiculous, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes straightforward enough. Let's begin. Our first step is to download the VSRX image from Juniper.net. Please be aware that Contrail SD-WAN requires specific code versions for supported hardware. These code versions can be found in the release notes for the current version of software. In the cloud, CSO is running 5.1.1. We can find these release notes by going to juniper.net, searching Contrail Service Orchestration 5.1, and then the first hit should be those release notes. We'll simply click on that first hit, and then on the left, will go to software support. Scrolling to the bottom, we find SRX series CPE devices and two versions of supported code with links. We'll be running 15.1x49-d172 as support for 19.3r2s1 is fairly recent and I have yet tested it myself. For simplicity's sake, I have already downloaded this SRX image. Here. Let's start by clicking on New, selecting Import Existing Virtual Machine. Now we can navigate to our OVA image. Click Open. We need to accept the license on this page, accept the amount of memory assigned to the VM, and then give the VM a name. This will start the import process. Now that the import is complete, click Customize Settings. We need to assign our network adapters to the specific interfaces that we configured in our last video. Failure to do so will result in errors on boot and these interfaces not being connected. I'm going to connect my first interface to my out-of-band management interface. You can also connect this to private to my Mac if you do not have an out-of-band management interface defined already. This isn't strictly required, but it cannot be left on auto-detect or it will fail. Network adapter 2 will go to WAN 0. Network adapter 3 
we'll go to WAN1. With that complete, we'll boot our guest and wait for a command prompt. When you see the login prompt, use the username root. On first boot of any Junos hardware, there is no password. A password is required for the first commit, but we will not be doing any configuration or commits during this boot. You'll be dropped into the shell, type CLI to access Junos. Our goal here is to ensure that the FPC comes online and then shut the virtual machine down. We're looking for the GE interfaces here, GE-000 and GE-001. The forwarding plane boots after the control plane. So we'll have to run this command a few times. In fact, we can use the refresh command to persistently check. Here we can see GE000 and GE001 are now present, indicating that the FPC has completed booting. We now must shut down the virtual machine completely. The purpose for this sequence is to populate the .vmx configuration file with elements that are only added after the initial boot of the VSRX guest. Once this VSRX guest shuts down completely, we can edit the .vmx configuration file and add the configuration elements required for our GE002 interface. With our VSRX guest shut down, we'll now add our third interface Yes, it's actually our fourth, third revenue, and connect it to our LAN VM interface. At this point, we're ready to edit our .vmx configuration file. We'll first start by identifying the folder that the configuration file for our VSRX guest is located in. We'll do this by right-clicking the guest and then selecting Show in Finder. While not always necessary, I found more consistent results in editing this file by first closing Fusion completely. Now let's look at where this file is located. On my system, it's within a virtual machines folder and my user directory. Open a terminal window and navigate to this file. We can see here that the folder names are not complete in Finder, but if you use your intuition, you'll get where you need to be. We'll verify that we're in the correct file by running the ls command, and here we'll see the vsrx sdwan.vmx file. The first step is to create a backup of this file, which I've done already, but I'll do again here for demonstration purposes. Just simply use the copy command to copy the VMX file to a file of identical name that ends with a .bak. Now edit your .vmx file. I've pre-staged the configurations for ease here. These are detailed in the companion document that comes along with this video series. Here we can see lines that are remarked out. When editing this file, simply navigate to the bottom of the file and add your configuration, as the ordering doesn't matter. Here you can see that I've defined the device type for our logical interface as VMX Net3. I've also added two other lines necessary for this guest to function properly.
I'm going to remove my remarks and save the file. Now that this file is saved, I'm going to open Fusion again, and I'm going to boot my VSRX guest. If you've edited your file incorrectly, and there are syntax errors, your guest will not boot, and you will get an error message indicating that there's a configuration problem. Another periodic issue that I've seen is the logical interface type changing. We can check this by using the cat command and verifying that the device type is still set to VMXNet3. I have, on rare occasions, seen this somewhat magically change itself to a different interface type, specifically VLANs, which is a PC Net32 type adapter. If this happens to you, you'll see an error message and your interface will not connect. Simply shut down your VSRX instance and turn off Fusion, re-edit the file, save it, and try again. Another error condition will be that the forwarding plane will boot and Junos will not boot. That's this WinRiver Linux prompt. If you get held up at the WinRiver Linux prompt, again, shut down VSRX, quit Fusion, and go fix the file, and then start all over again. 99 times out of 100, this will work. If you continue to have issues, please feel free to reach out to me. This can be a little bit complex, but once it's working, it's, it's rock solid. Now we wait for our command prompt, and then we'll verify that our GE 0 slash 0 slash 2 interface is present. All right, let's log in. Once again, anytime you log in as root, you will automatically be placed into the system shell. Once there, simply type CLI to load into Junos. Now I can tell you right now, our interfaces aren't going to be online yet. That's okay. We're still waiting for the forwarding plane to come online. In the meantime, I'm going to start our WAN emulation guest. I'm going to do this because the basic configuration that we're going to put onto this VRX includes configuring DHCP for our simulated WAN interfaces. We will not receive a DHCP address on these interfaces unless our WAN emulation guest is online. Here we can see that our gigabit Ethernet interfaces are online. So now we're going to put in some simple configuration that will be the first step in our onboarding. First, we're going to have to set the root authentication password. This is required in order to commit the configuration initially. Second, we're going to define our WAN interfaces for DHCP. While not strictly required, I am going to define DHCP on my FXP interface as well. Finally, we need to ensure that our WAN interfaces are in the trust security zone with full permissions for provisioning. This part of the configuration will be rewritten once the device is provisioned by CSO, so don't worry about any security issues.
Once this is complete, commit and quit. We can see here that GE000 has gotten an address and GE001 has gotten an address as well. And we can also see that these are on the simulated WAN subnets that we defined earlier. That's it. Go ahead and leave everything running and we'll pick this up in the next video. And as always, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Take care.